fermented foods are so good for gut health. And, yep, you can buy it at the store, but they're really expensive. So why not try making fermented dishes at home. So an example of a fermented food is sauerkraut, which is salted cabbage. I'm going to use that concept and use zucchini instead and the results are fantastic. So I've just been grating about a kilo of beautiful zucchini when they're at a good price at your green grocer and it's plentiful definitely use them for something like this because it lasts in the jar for a long time if stored correctly. So into a bowl we'll pop our grated zucchini. Okay, and I've just grated that on a coarse grater. And to one kilo of grated zucchini, I'm going to add two tablespoons of salt. Now I'm using flaked salt for this. So every recipe is gonna be different depending on the type of salt. So for flaked salt, two tablespoons. I don't want it to be too salty, but I also need the salt to react with the zucchini for it to ferment. So this is where you get your hands in here and give it a really good mix just like this, squeezing it, but we're not squeezing it so much that we're pureeing it. We just want to extract as much water as possible out of this zucchini. So it won't happen instantly, but you can almost see now, see that? See there's liquid coming out of that? That's what we're after. And ideally, you want to leave this for one hour. So we'll just pop that into a corner, let it rest, and in one hour we'll come back. So after one hour, this is what the salted zucchini should look like. Look how much liquid has been extracted from the zucchini just by adding that salt and bruising it slightly. So now we need to pack it into a jar. So I'm using about a one litre jar. I've sterilised it and that means that we've washed it really well and then dried it in an oven at a low temperature. You really want to sterilise this because if it's not clean and sterilised, it won't last long so it's all about having this for a long shelf life. Before we start packing in the zucchini I want to add one flavour to it and you can add any flavour to this you like. You could add some bay leaves, you could add some thyme, it's totally up to you. I'm just adding some freshly crushed and toasted coriander seeds so we'll sprinkle that in and it's just a gesture of it because it is all about that gorgeous zucchini. So we'll use a spoon to start adding this and I'm also adding that liquid too because it does preserve it. So into the jar and we want to make it really compact. So as compact as you possibly can. I'm just using a pestle from a mortar and pestle and we're just going to press that down so it's compact and then I'm going to add some more. And this is just an example by using zucchini. You can use this theory on any type of vegetable. Uh, beetroot, fantastic fermented. Carrot is another great option. And then you can always go back to that classic, which is with cabbage. I just love it. And any of that liquid in the bowl, we want to add that too. So pour that in. Okay, and you'll notice that it doesn't go all the way to the top. You actually want a two centimetre space before the lid because this is going to ferment, it's going to bubble up. You don't want it to overflow. So again, just pack that in as tight as possible, letting that liquid cover the top. And just to weigh down all of that zucchini, I've just got a small onion here. You can use a larger one too. And we're going to just pop that in, press it down inside the jar like that. You see the liquid coming up and we've got the space. Lid that's also sterilised, it goes on nice and tight. And then you want to place this in a warm spot in your kitchen. So you want to leave it for a few days and then what they call burping it. It's a very funny term. And you want to do that to allow some of the air to be released. After a week of burping it, so every couple of days, then you can just leave it in a cool, dry area. It's totally fine to eat after a week, even better if you leave it for a couple of weeks. And this is one that you can see has been sitting for a couple of weeks. It smells slightly funky and that means it has worked. So I also like to taste it over the weeks just to see if it's the way I like it, which is just slightly salty. It has a little bit of earthiness to it. This one is just right. And you can serve it in some quiches. It's a fantastic base for some vegetable slices in a salad or the way I'm going to serve it, which is 
is with some halloumi. I'm going through halloumi craze. I love halloumi so much. So in a flat pan, just like this one, we'll add some slices of halloumi, a little drizzle of oil on the halloumi, no salt, of course, and then we're just going to cook this just for a few minutes on each side or until it's caramelised. All right, halloumi's looking good, so we'll place it onto a plate. Just pile them next to each other, side by side. As we know, halloumi is one of those things you don't wait. As soon as it gets on the plate, get that fermented zucchini on top, and then we'll sprinkle that over the top. And I'm going to garnish this with a sprig of mint. All right, let's have a taste of this combo. They go so well together. You've got that salty halloumi cheese that we all love so much. And then you've got this funky, almost zesty, zingy, fermented zucchini. I love this combination and I think you will too.